Uh, it's Tech News Day, and we do have plenty of tech news for you. But, but first, we need to talk about the absolutely historic things happening in our country's very functional House of Representatives. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So Things are working will... great. The gears are nice and lubricated. It's yeah. a well-oiled machine down mm -hmm. there on Capitol Hill. So you remember way, way, way back in January of this year when the Republicans, despite having gained control over the House in the recent midterm elections, had a, a little bit of trouble actually agreeing on who should be in charge. Mm. Appointing a new Speaker of the House when control of Congress switches hands is usually little more than a formality, but in this case it took 15 rounds of voting over five straight days before Kevin McCarthy was finally voted in, and the process was a real shit show. And embarrassing, We too. had a great time with mm -hmm. it. It demonstrated that despite Republicans controlling the House, Officially, uh, the party was not meaningfully united and was essentially being held hostage by some of its most extreme members, people like Matt Gates and Lauren Beetlejuice Bobert. But hey, 15th time's the charm, right? I mean, if it took that long, this is going to be the guy. Fool me once. Yeah. Fool me 13 times. Fool me 14 times. Well, don't get fooled again. So Kevin McCarthy gave in to enough of the holdouts concessions to move past this little hiccup. And it was smooth sailing from there. Well, fast forward to this week, though, and it turns out House Republicans are just as divided as they were nine months ago. And Kevin McCarthy is officially out. You're out! Having served the shortest ever term as Speaker of the House since 1876, and the third shortest term in all of U.S. history. Oof. Here is NBC News. The House of Representatives on Tuesday took the unprecedented step of ousting a speaker from office less than nine months after Kevin McCarthy won the powerful gavel in a dramatic 15-round floor fight. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, the vote was 216 to 210 to topple the California Republican, who continued to insist to the bitter end that he would never give up. After the vote, the office of the Speaker of the House, the second rung on the ladder of succession to the U.S. presidency, was declared vacant. It continues, all 208 Democrats teamed up with just eight GOP rebels to vacate the speaker's chair. The first time in U.S. history that lawmakers have formally voted to remove a sitting speaker in the middle of a term. An overwhelming number of Republicans, 210, voted to keep McCarthy in power, but it was not enough to stop the effort led by Representative Matt Gates, Republican of Florida, who for weeks has accused McCarthy of breaking promises to conservatives to cut spending. We heard Speaker McCarthy say that he wanted us to bring it on, so I guess we did, Gates told reporters after the successful vote. For weeks, Gates had threatened to call a vote to expel McCarthy if he passed a short-term government funding bill relying on Democratic votes. When McCarthy did just that last weekend to avert a shutdown, Gates moved against him. Under House rules, McCarthy had until Wednesday to take up the resolution that Gates, a conservative Florida Republican and Donald Trump loyalist, filed Monday night. But McCarthy and his allies moved to rip off the Band-Aid and quickly take on the so-called motion to vacate that has consumed the Capitol. What are you going to do? Stab me? That was, uh, yes, it was quite <laughs> the tweet on Monday where McCarthy tweeted out, bring it on. Let's get this bullshit over with. Sir, you are, you are fired, as they say. So, yeah, Kevin McCarthy is out and says he will not run for the position again. Can't really blame him. Uh, <laughs> what, are you going to go 16 times this yeah, uh, vote? I think he's gotten a taste of uh, what the job in, is like, and he's, he's kind of over it by now. Yeah, North Carolina Rep. Patrick McHenry is now the Speaker Pro Tempore, a.k.a. Temporary Speaker of the House, and he's apparently not very happy about it, as shown by how hard he slammed the gavel down after assuming the position. Someone, a crafty Twitter user out there, uh, quickly added the squeak noise to the, <laughs> to the gavel, making it so much better. Nice. Uh, and the House is in recess until next week, when a handful of possible new speakers will vie for the position and probably have a real bad time. This is the worst uh, thing that Steve Scalise is ever going to have to face in his life, right? He also, like, Steve Scalise literally has, like, blood cancer right now. I'm yes, like, he's what being are you, treated for blood cancer. What are you cancer? doing? So just focus on your yourself. I, I know if I was being treated for blood cancer, you know what I would want? More stress in my yeah. life. I guess that's, I mean, we saw it with Dianne Feinstein. She yeah. literally voted like hours before she died. These people, they, they don't know any other life. Yeah. Anyways, uh, a taste of what is to come. 
can be seen in Marjorie Taylor Greene's insistence that the only candidate for Speaker of the House that she will support is Donald Trump. Donald Duck. <laughs> Donald Duck. That's what everyone calls him now, by yeah. the way. Uh, who, uh, you won't need to add the squeaky noise sound. That will He will have a gavel that has That's a squeaky right. noise built in. Uh, technically, there is no rule saying that the Speaker has to actually be in Congress, so... Giddy up, I guess. Let's go. Next week should be real interesting. A, a lot of people have pointed out uh, various rules that uh, would make it not possible for Trump to be the Speaker of the House. I think they should do it. Uh, if you are actively facing a, a, a felony trial, you apparently can't serve as Speaker of the House. Yeah, you also can't buy a gun, but he went and did that the other week. <laughs> and he also... Hey, uh, look at that. It's got my face on it. Uh, at, in the same breath, trying to... Uh, claim what he did was perfectly fine and perfectly legal, also admitted to other fraud today. He was like, actually, I reported that I make a lot less than I do. That makes me smart. <laughs> but yeah, over on Truth, he seems to be into the idea. Yes, he spent a, a, a 40 Truth posts today yeah. talking Look about me, anything. the gavel. Yes. As president, they never let you have a gavel. Yeah. This is my chance to have the gavel. Uh, and uh, if you take... Eric Trump's, which no one ever should. If you take Eric's, Eric Trump's words uh, literally, it sounds like the government shutdown thing was, uh, the, the reason they were so adamant about it was that they thought that would also shut down the courts that Trump was facing. No, that's... It's I'm a state afraid. court, so... Well, I mean, yeah, he is facing... No, yeah, they're all state... There's one federal one, but the, yeah. he's in the New York state yeah. one right now. Okay, yeah. well, uh, but just nice very try. Funny. Yeah. Nice try, guys. Uh-huh. Anyways, that's enough politics. We will keep you updated on that circus as it plays out, but they're on recess now. We're, we've just nuked the, the House of Representatives. Time to go home for six days to our families and think about what we've done before we come back and uh, start throwing shit at each other all over but, again. But not they didn't leave before uh, doing an on-camera interview where one of the uh, Republican representatives was like, oh, Matt Gates, the guy that was... Uh, He's showing crushing us, up Viagras and snorting. Snorting them and uh, showing us explicit photos and videos on his phone. Yeah. It's an old Which is yeah, it's an old it's a throwback. Thing, but, uh, to hear members of his own party be like, "All right, we've had enough of them." Yeah, all that shit's true. Yeah. And there's a reason why no one in the conference came and defended him, because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and 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 chase it with um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. This is obviously before you got married. And so when that accusation came out, no one defended him, and then no one on the media would give him a time of the day. All of a sudden, he found fame because he opposed the Speaker of the House. The Democrats give me very few things to be happy about. The, when the Republicans just openly are in complete disarray, that does warm my heart. It's good to see. We love to see it. Yes, because for so long, that was the whole Democrats thing. It was just like, yeah. they can't get together on stuff. Uh, they can't be in unison. And now, the past couple of years, the Republicans, they're being controlled by the more insane members of their party. Yeah. To uh, uh, detrimental effect. <laughs> so, yeah, no more politics. It's time, time for tech. Time yeah. to talk about tech. And one of, the ways, one of the ways that tech has completely altered the world in a relatively short period of time is dating. And you can certainly still meet people in real life the old-fashioned way. And I would recommend it. But <laughs> at this point, that's more the exception than the norm. That's like people that have like a rotary phone still in their house. Yeah, it's, it's like, vintage. oh, okay. So you're you're doing like vintage, vintage core. dating. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, most people are just they're on the apps. And it's 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 happened very quickly. In just our lifetime, online dating has gone from being something seen as shameful and weird to being something that you probably lie about when people ask how the two of you met. Two being the way that a, a good chunk of the married couples we know met each other. Yep. And are having children. These, yes. the, the, the dating apps are, that's how babies are made now. Mm -hmm. And as these apps have gotten more popular, they, they've introduced paid tiers to their memberships for people who want to make the most of their time swiping and scrolling. You can't put a price on love, but recently <laughs> Tinder put a price on love. Yeah. And it is $6,000 a year. <laughs> Now, love is pricey, baby. Uh, here's USA Today. Would you pay $6,000 a year for a dating app? Fuck no. No. That's the entire <laughs> populace saying that. 
Tinder on Friday announced a new subscription plan called Tinder Select, an invite-only membership offered to less than 1% of users. So if you turn down the offer they send you, wow, you must be an idiot wow. because they thought you were in the top 1%. I guess you're not 1% material. Yeah, this is great marketing it because is. it's the you're a loser if you don't get this yeah. uh, button. <laughs> Uh, applicants that are accepted can unlock exclusive perks like early access to new features and a virtual badge for $499 per month, according to Bloomberg. Is it a check mark with a sort of uh, doily around it? Yeah, it says, I'm fucking terrible with money. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big, it's actually a red flag. I mean, for a lot of people, it'd be a white flag or a green flag because this, this fucking idiot's spending. $500 a month on Tinder. Imagine what he'll spend on you. <laughs> yeah. So it's the app's fourth paid tier option, joining Tinder Plus, Tinder Gold, and Tinder Platinum. <laughs> what the fuck is going it's on? It's the HBO of dating apps. Yeah. We, we don't know what this thing's called. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder Max. Yeah. The new premium tier is going to have a relatively tiny amount of new payers, but a significant impact on revenue per payer and ultimately on revenue, said Gary Swindler. No, it's Swindler. <laughs> Gary Swindler. Chief, Why? Why don't people trust me? Chief financial it's officer. Swindler. And president of Tinder parent company Match Group during a city conference earlier this month. Okay, so yeah, he kind of spells it out there, but it would appear that Tinder has taken a page from free mobile games and started going after whales. And no, calling someone who spends $500 a month on a dating app a whale is not a comment on their appearance. Though... Not necessarily. Though, <laughs> some might argue. <laughs> no, in mobile games, whales are the roughly 2% of users who drive the majority of revenue by just constantly buying gems and shit because they have no self-control whatsoever. Yeah. Most of the people playing these games don't ever spend any money. And that would be a huge problem for the companies developing those games. But the whales keep the whole operation afloat. And now, Tinder's got its own whales. Uh -huh. As for what $6,000 a year gets you, uh, here's USA Today again. According to Tinder's website, a Tinder Select membership includes direct messaging to people without matching first up to two times a week. <sighs> Doesn't sound uh, great. Uh, a profile with an unblurred photo that is prioritized on other users' likes you grid for one week. What? Do they blur understand. your... I don't understand what that means. Okay. A badge that shows off access to the exclusive <laughs> tier. Again, it's the red flag emoji yeah. or the green flag emoji. The I'm, bad, the I'm bad with money badge. Yeah. A select mode that lets members see and be seen by the app's most sought-after profiles for more exceptional connections. Early access to new features and the ability to hide advertisements and see likes sent over the past week. Okay. I, That's I don't $500 understand how... a month gets you all that and nothing more. Th this seems like the most... Uh... Like, the, the only people that would use this both ways but uh, would be the worst people that you would want to date. Yeah. And I think the marketing with this would be like, well, it's $500 a month, but with these features... You won't have to lose it, look, use it very long because it, it pays for itself. You're gonna yeah. find the love of your life almost immediately. The love of your life is right behind that paywall. I guess, but also like, hey, buddy, a lot of people's future girlfriends are has right there. Tinder. I mean, I know Tinder. You know, when it started, it was like pretty ex explicitly a hookup app. Mm -hmm. I know it's gone past that, but it, I is it. I don't think even now it's seen as like the place you go to find your future spouse. Yes, like, it, I don't it think that's the, the vibe it gives off. It would be the uh, going to like the, a gala versus going to like the, the, club. the frat party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. So the whales they get some nice uh, pay-to-win mechanics for uh, dropping that. They should get them uh, like uh, skins. Yeah, you got like a cool like you can do now. You can do like the plane uh, photo shoot. You they get invited to the 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 selfie warehouse. They should charge them a little extra to make an NFT your profile picture. Yes, and your <laughs> your profile's an octagon or whatever instead of a circle. But no, I think look, if I was head of marketing there, I would be like, you come down to the Tinder uh, photo op warehouse, mm -hmm. and we got we got the fake sand and the beach. We got the plane. Oh. We have uh, the Eiffel Tower right over here. We have uh, all of the things. We Oh, there's a, the biggest fish you've ever seen to hold up in your photo. I mean, they, they have, I've seen the ones they have that are mostly targeted at like women influencers where it's just like the fate, it's like just pe a piece of a plane. There's yeah. like all those backgrounds. But yeah, they need the one for the men that just has like the biggest fish you've ever seen. If you're a member of Tinder Select, you get that, you get to go down to the Bass Pro Shop and fish out of the inside fishing tank and then hold whatever you catch. Yeah, but yeah. you got to throw it back. 
you do have to throw it you back. You can't eat it. There's a lot of bachelors in line, yeah. so you know, take your time, but be quick about it as well. But yeah, um, five hundred bucks a month, you you get the ability to direct message people that you haven't actually matched with. Hey, which you know, I got money. Hey, the recipients of those messages surely will enjoy that they are being messaged by someone that they have not. Uh, Swiped. I can't even remember if it's left or right, to, but to, they have not given them permission to do so. To your point, getting this message and seeing the thing that is would be like this person has more money than sense. Yeah, and maybe a lot of women are into that. Not all, but some. Yeah. But yeah, everyone likes getting unsolicited messages from people that are sexually attracted to them. I mean, am I right, boys? Yeah. It's hard to imagine who exactly this is for, except for horny men with too much That's money. Exactly who it's for. And even moderately attractive women on the apps will tell you that their inboxes are already overflowing without having to spend any money at all. So this ain't for them. So yeah, we do gotta wonder who exactly this is for, aside from desperate men with lots of spending money, or just people that have become completely addicted to like the dopamine rush of swiping. It's all just, it's tactile. The dating yeah. is like secondary. This is, uh, yeah, this is, this is like a Vegas casino. Yeah. I need, they, what they should do is add like animated GIFs, like uh, more sparkles and shit that fly out of it when you do stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like like what YouTube did with the like button, which you should uh, oh hit the like you button. Should, you should hit because well, look at look at that little fireworks. Yeah, it's almost subconscious, but yeah, they're using they're using uh, casino gotcha game mechanics to get you to do the thing that you really should have been doing already, which is liking the video. Yeah, and instead of the more streamlined process that Tinder has for the base users, where you just see profiles, uh, Tinder Select. It uh, pops up a, a mystery box with question marks all over it for every profile. And you get to you go like this, and it goes, bah! and confetti flies out. Yeah. And then the profile rises out of the box. It's a whole fun thing, and it gives you that sweet, sweet dopamine rush. There should be like a scratcher uh, thing yes. on there. Like you scratch off your matches. Yeah, and while you're um. browsing, it has subway runners or whatever that game is <laughs> going the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. These are all free ideas. You can take them. Tinder. We're, we're just coming up with them on the spot. You're, you. you're going after those whales now? They, there are ways. Oh, what is, oh, I got a call from Gary Swindler coming in. Gary Swindler. Oh, I'm hired? <laughs> Fuck you. How'd you like to join Team Swindle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But let's move on now to some news that is not surprising at all. And in fact, finally confirmed something that everyone has long suspected. Google search is no good nowadays. It is bad it's i don't use it anymore it it's is. too inaccurate it's too bad yeah don't like it and google is currently in the midst of an antitrust case that has revealed some specifics about why exactly <laughs> google search sucks so much uh, awkward timing for their big uh uh pixel day today but nah. uh, you know, whatever i mean i think people can separate the android stuff from the Google search stuff. I will get you on iPhone before long. Eh. Here's Megan Gray writing for Wired about a slide that was displayed during the trial about something called semantic matching. Google likely alters queries billions of times a day in trillions of different variations. Here's how it works. Say you search for children's clothing. Google converts it without your knowledge to a search for Nikolai brand kidswear, making a behind the scenes substitution of your actual query with a different query that just happens to generate more money for the company and will generate results you weren't searching for at all. It's not possible for you to opt out of the substitution. If you don't get the results you want and you try to refine your query, you are wasting your time. This is a twisted shopping mall you can't escape. God damn it. And that that's in line with like our firsthand experience that we've been talking about for the past year or so, where you would search for something on Google and the first half of the page is literally just ads. Yeah, and ads for like specific things. Mm -hmm. um, and you can always, you can always specifically tell when you search uh, for a brand and you get their direct competitor. It's it's especially obvious in sectors where there is like kind of just one or two, like yeah. two brands. Mm -hmm. Like you search for, I, I'm, I can't think of an example right now, but you search for something and like all the top results are like for their yeah, like computer competitor. mouse. And it's like Logitech versus whatever, uh, Corsair, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. But the other thing that's annoying is that they constantly like hide and rework the actual buttons that I use, which is like, I want to see images or news. Oh or... yeah, they're always like shuffling them all around. It's a mystery. Yeah. And Bing's better with the images anyway. But Bing just straight up, straight up uh, it's like, oh, just use Bing. Like Bing's just going to hallucinate results for you. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? You, I don't know what you searched, but you should mix ammonia and bleach and just stick your head <laughs> in the bucket. That's a joke, by the way. We're not advocating that. Anyway, the article continues. Why would Google want to do this? First, the generated results to the latter query are more likely to be shopping oriented. 
triggering your subsequent behavior much like the candy display at a grocery <laughs> store's checkout. Second, that latter query will automatically generate the keyword ads placed on the search engine results page by stores like TJ Maxx, which pay Google every time you click on them. In short, it's a guaranteed way to line Google's pockets. It's also a guaranteed way to harm everyone except Google. This system reduces search engine quality for users and drives up advertiser expenses. Google can get away with it because these manipulations are imperceptible to the user and advertiser, and the company has effectively captured more than 90% market share. So what are you going to do about yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to go bing. Uh, <laughs> it continues, it's unclear how often or for how long Google has been doing this, but the machination is clever and ambitious. I've spent decades looking for examples of Google putting its enormous thumb on the scale to censor or amplify certain results, and it hadn't even occurred to me that Google just flat out deletes queries and replaces them with ones that monetize better. Most scams follow an elementary bait and switch technique, where the scoundrel lures you in with attractive bait and then at the right time switches to a different option. But Google innovated by reversing the scam, first switching your query, then letting you believe you were getting the best search engine results. This is a magic trick that Google could only pull off after monopolizing the search engine market, giving consumers the false impression that this is incomparably great only because you've grown so accustomed to it. So yeah, that would explain why Google search results are such garbage. Um, they are literally taking your search query and just changing it to something else mm -hmm. in order to make more money off advertising, because advertisers pay them when people search for things, and <laughs> we're, we can... Kill two birds with one stone here. And they know you better than yourself. And everybody wins, by which, I mean, we win. Yeah. No one else wins. There, so, someone's out there searching for, like, a Nordstrom, Nordstrom fall jackets. And like, you broke ass! Here's TJ Maxx. Yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We know who you are. They make more money the worse their product is, yeah. which is uh, usually a sign that the FTC needs to step in and do something, please. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot more to this antitrust case. Um, it's unclear how things will shake out, but I, so far it's looking like there will be uh, some... You would assume, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're getting away from this scot-free, regardless of how it happens. But yeah, pretty. it is very clear that Google having so much control over how things are found online is probably a bad thing. Yeah. But hey, at least there's Bing, you know? <laughs> And Bing doesn't just let you search for stuff. It also, it, it does AI images. You just type in a prompt and out pops a high quality AI generated image of exactly what you typed. Like, I don't know, for example, here's uh, Kirby doing 9-11. And here's Walter White doing 9-11. And here's Mickey Mouse doing 9-11. And here's SpongeBob. What's he doing? You, that's right, you guessed it. He's doing 9-11. 9-11, it's a noun, it's a verb, it's, all, it's everything. Noun, verb, 9-11. Uh, also, one of the better examples of AI-created art that I've ever seen is the 9-11 ones. The SpongeBob one, where he's like looking back at the camera like, here we go. I, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but I saw a really good one on Twitter of like Kermit the Frog with like reflective uh, aviators and like you can see like the Twin Towers in his glasses. There, there was also the uh, Kermit the Frog... Uh, committing a mass shooting. There was a couple other ones going around this week that were uh, uh, pretty crazy. The, yeah, but clearly the main use case for this technology is shit posting. Yes. Yeah. And just making it do things that it clearly, they're, they really don't want you to be able to do it, but it's really easy to get it to do it anyway. Yeah. So yeah, the hot new thing with Bing's image generator seems to be getting beloved copyrighted characters to do 9-11. And it is slightly tricky since Bing is smart enough to block prompts like Kirby doing 9-11. But you can still type Kirby sitting in the cockpit of a plane flying towards two tall skyscrapers and you'll get the results that you're looking for. So, hey, very cool. And probably very exciting for the holders of all of these copyrights. I bet they love it. Specifically, Nintendo and Nickelodeon. It is fucking what Like, I, for some reason, I assume... Because I, I think Dolly very early on... Wait, no, because this is Dolly. I thought Dolly uh, purged their training data of copyrighted, like really obvious copyrighted materials, but mm -hmm. I guess not. I guess this seems not. like the most, because like with the written AI, it, like that's, it's a lot harder to prove that you fed a bunch of copyrighted work into it. But when this thing knows exactly what fucking Mickey Mouse and Kermit the Frog and Kirby look like, like yeah. you can't deny that it has been fed copyrighted material. Yeah. Uh, I do want to point out, though, uh, probably no issue with Walter White doing this because he literally did uh, something close to it yeah. in the actual show. He is indirectly responsible for a midair collision. Yeah, if, if 
you told Walter White that you were going to, like, tell his family about his drug business, he would do a 9-11 to get out of it. Yeah. It wouldn't no, I wasn't him. making drugs. I was committing terrorism. I did it because I love this family. Yeah. <laughs> did it for all of you. I'm in the empire <laughs> business. Uh, yeah. So, in a similar vein, though, Meta recently unveiled AI-generated stickers for its messaging app. And uh, it is going so good, everyone. Uh, everyone's going to love seeing what... Uh, yeah. the, the very creative users on Meta are coming I love up with stickers. Yeah, here's Vice. Meta has started slowly rolling out its new AI-generated stickers for Messenger, and the results so far are totally unhinged. The company, which owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, announced that it would be introducing AI tools to Messenger last week, starting with a limited rollout in the U.S. On Tuesday night, examples of the kinds of stickers the AI tool generates based on user prompts went viral, and it's easy to see why. Montreal-based artist Pierre-Olivier de Bien posted a few examples, and they include Nintendo character Waluigi holding a rifle, a Mickey Mouse toilet hybrid, child soldiers, a nude Justin Trudeau bending over, and a busty Karl Marx wearing a dress. He looks great. De Bien used Meta's tool to generate stickers of other well-known characters as well, such as a pregnant Shrek and Elmo holding a knife. Stickers generated by other users included Hillary Clinton in jail and President Xi Jinping morphed with Winnie the Pooh, a notorious insult directed at Xi by detractors. Well, hopefully this doesn't make its way to WeChat. or Everyone's going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you're trying to start World War III, cut it out. So obviously this is the coolest thing Meta's done. Yeah. And very, you know, credit where it's due, despite being the most horrific company to ever grace mankind with its presence, uh, the past... Two, three months? Yeah. They're innovating. Yeah. They've got their back up against their wall and they're they're innovating. Mark Zuckerberg, he's got the he's got the fighter mindset now. Yes. He's back in the ring, baby. Yeah, they have a uh, uh, a social media app called Threads that, you know, has lost a lot of its user base, but still does okay. And they have these cool, very cool AI generated stickers that people are abusing the hell out of. Yeah, you can do copyright infringement so much faster than you used to be able to do it. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg also drove Elon Musk maybe literally insane. Yeah, he definitely took part mm -hmm. in uh, the Elon Musk's just mental state collapse. I still would be happier than anyone else on the planet if Facebook was just tossed in the trash can, though. So there you go. Now, previously, you were limited to whatever stickers face, uh, Facebook made available to you. Boo. But now there's stickers for literally anything that you can possibly think of. You just type in what you want, and it even shows you multiple options. It's that good. How big do you want Karl Marx's boobs to be? Karl Marx double D. <laughs> Triple X. Triple X. Uh, so here's Gizmodo describing the stickers that they were able to generate. In Gizmodo's own tests, the phrase Elon Musk large breasts was blocked, <laughs> while Elon Musk mammaries got past <laughs> emu's filters. Phrases SpongeBob rifle and Karl Marx underwear generated stickers as well. Most jarringly, searching for Pol Pot generated a sticker of the Cambodian dictator seemingly sitting on a throne of babies and skulls. Oh my god. Guantanamo Bay showed a cartoon boy in an orange jumpsuit behind jail bars, while Syria gas attacks generated a barrage of stickers of people wearing gas masks, some of which were laying down with their eyes closed. The prompt school shooting also showed several children holding guns while school shooting mass murder goes against community guidelines. So thankfully... School shooting, that's okay. School shooting, mass murder. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, we got guardrails, buddy. Who said you could commit mass murder at the school shooting? Not cool, guys. Uh, I'm under the impression that all of these prompts, whether it's Bing or Facebook, are being fed directly to the FBI. I would hope. If this is just a big psyop to get people to type in their deepest, darkest uh, wishes. So... Tread lightly. So that's, uh, yeah. I, I, when I tried to use the sticker function, it was, maybe it's just my, my Android phone, but it, uh, it just wouldn't load anything. You got those shitty blob emojis anyway. What do you need? Blob the... emojis? Yeah, they're all ugly looking. They're not the cool, What's crisp... a blob emoji? They're all blobby and weird. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyways. You're talking about emojis? Yeah. These are stickers. Yeah, you don't need stickers. You've got the ultimate way to express yourself. And what do you need stickers for anyway? The you only, don't have iMessage. The only emoji I use is the... Yeah, <laughs> that one. The was that is that the nervous one or the drunk one? No, the nervous one. I like the drunk one. Ooh. Sure. Um, one more thing about Google search. We called it before about the Google search results on their web page being terrible. I don't know what the hell's happened to Gmail, but it is oh, it's unusable. terrible. 
Yeah, Gmail fucking sucks. You can't. I, I've they, looked for it, like. Uh, I get uh, just straight up the most like obvious scams. Just like right there at the top of my main inbox. I'm like, guys, guys. And then <laughs> actual important emails going straight to spam. Yeah. My, the biggest problem is like, I'll look for, uh, recently I got my brother's, uh, my niece a, uh, a birthday gift. It hadn't arrived yet. So I'm like, oh, I'll just look up the tracking number. It, it's, I couldn't do it. It doesn't find what you're looking for. I yet. had the business name and the day that I ordered and it couldn't find anything. It was all promotional shit the entire time. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. Fix it. But speaking of Elon Musk's memories, protruding. It's time to talk about Elon Musk. Boo. Buying Twitter cost him a whole lot of money. And despite being the richest person on earth, he did have to call in a few favors to complete the deal. And the financial institutions who helped fund Musk's Twitter takeover by chipping in around $13 billion of the $44 billion purchase price are apparently uh, not too stoked about how their investment is panning out. Elon, mm. when do you think you're going to pay that back? Yeah. Never? Uh, Never? Well, here's the Financial Times. Financial Times, which again, uh, the liberal financial. No, this is a historically someone that would be would have their nose straight up Elon. Yeah, it would be their cheerleaders of capital. This is how bad it's so, got. Yeah. yeah, here's the Financial Times. Lindy Ocarino is next week planning to meet the seven banks that helped bankroll Elon Musk's takeover of X, formerly known as Twitter, to lay out her plans to revive the struggling social media company. Said people briefed on the matter. Yaccarino, who took over as chief executive in June, is set to meet bankers at Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Barclays, MUFG, BNP Paribas, Mizuho, and Societe Generale on October 5th. The long-awaited meeting is a high-stakes opportunity for Yaccarino to convince X's lenders that she has a plan to revive the social network by boosting the advertising revenue, or even by moving into areas such as subscriptions and payments, the people said. X declined to comment. The seven banks declined to comment. Quote, she has to get him out, said a banker at one of X's lenders, adding that lenders were unclear how she could win back advertisers if Musk continues to stoke tensions on the platform. They need ad dollars to come back. <laughs> what are you doing to get him out? I like, have no power here. Also, bitch, you invested in Elon. You're acting all surprised. Oh, they need to get rid of Elon. You invested because Elon was surely going to make this deal a uh, total success. Yes, this is the bank's fault. Reaping, sowing, enjoy. What's the what's the the quote? Like if if you owe someone a hundred dollars, you're in if, trouble. If, yeah, if you owe the bank, if you owe them a million dollars. It's yeah. their problem. If you owe the bank a thousand dollars, it's your problem. If you owe the bank a million dollars, it's the bank's problem. Yeah, right. Well, it continues. The banks, led by Morgan Stanley, have been left in the uncomfortable position of holding the debt on their own balance sheets and are hoping the meeting with Yaccarino will yield a plan that could help them sell it on to other investors. <laughs> There's got to be someone dumber than us. Pawn this shit off. What if we turned X into an NFT? <laughs> Late last year, the banks received offers to buy some of the senior debt, which accounted for $6.7 billion of the $12.7 billion to total, at just $0.65 cents on the dollar. Oh, they should have taken that deal. Yeah. <laughs> Had the banks agreed to the terms, they would have incurred aggregate losses far in excess of $1 billion, an amount the banks have been unwilling to stomach. Those losses would balloon further if the remaining debt, including $3 billion of junior loans, was sold by the banks into the market. But as X's business deteriorated last year, even the hedge funds and credit investment firms that had once entertained buying the debt started to balk at the idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I changed my mind. You want? You still want this? Pulling what? that off the table. Well, we wanted it before, but now it's it's a good thing you didn't sell it to us and, uh, at sixty cents on the dollar because I, now it's worth way less. I don't know the exact math. Someone had done it on on, on Twitter, which is now called X, but I refuse to call it X. Uh, but the the offer for sixty five cents a share based on what they all paid for it, came in around the exact valuation of Twitter before yeah. uh, Musk made the That's offer. That's what's like insane about this is like- every, He inflated the yeah, price. Yeah, everyone knew that what he was paying for Twitter at the time was wildly inflated. It was unclear exactly how wildly, but like no one at the time thought Twitter was worth $44 billion. So why are you investing in a company that you know isn't worth what you're paying for it? Uh, you it, fucking idiot. It was such an outrageous offer that Twitter's entire board just went, all right, cool. Yeah. They were so stoked when he made that offer. They were like, this is our parachute. I'm starting to think the banks aren't very smart. Not Might very be. with money. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you won't catch us shedding any tears for a bunch of banks losing a shitload of money on an investment that anyone 
could have told them was risky at best. Mm -hmm. But it's still very funny that these banks are learning not to trust Elon Musk in the most expensive way possible. He can't even pay back the interest. No. And he never will. No. This, no one's ever getting paid back for this. Just accept it. This is like investing in FaZe Clan. Twitter was never worth $44 billion, and it never will be. Mm -mm. Just say goodbye to the money. You made a mistake. It happens. Yeah, Warner Brothers bought Machinima. Learn made, from made a this. mistake. <laughs> Learn from this. A lot of bad acquisitions. You know, you can't always win. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And sometimes you, you lose $12 billion. I don't know. You lost. Yeah. Hopefully they have pretty big bootstraps. Uh, but someone else who's learning uh, an expensive lesson about trusting Elon Musk, uh, but in a way that's way less funny, mm -hmm. is Grimes. This is not a fun story. Who this week sued the father of her children, saying that he won't let her see her son. Here's The Verge. Grimes is suing Elon Musk to establish a parental relationship with one of their three children. Three? Yeah, they have three. I thought they had the one, and then the other one was the one that people just found out about. No, they had one, and then there was a secret child that uh, came out like two years ago. And someone was interviewing Grimes at home and heard, like, kept hearing a baby crying and like, like, what is that? And she's like, oh, I don't know. And then the Walter Isaacson book revealed the third child. Okay. It's, uh, it's X. Um, the third one is Tau. Those are the boys. And then the middle one is a girl named some fucking bullshit. I don't Which remember. one's like Thunder or whatever? That's the, the middle one, the girl. Okay. Uh, so yeah, one of the three children, according to the New York Post. Details of the lawsuit remain under seal, but TMZ speculates that it revolves around their youngest child, Tao, uh, after Grimes said that Musk will not allow her to visit one of their children. Last month, Grimes posted on X, the site formerly known as Twitter, Ugh. that she was pursuing some sort of legal action against Musk. Tell Elon to let me see my son or please respond to my lawyer, she wrote in a response to Walter Isaacson, who was promoting his biography of the Tesla CEO. The lawsuit, filed September 29th in California, is meant to establish the child's legal parents when the parents are not married. A petition to determine parental relationship can also be used to seek child support, expenses with pregnancy, and custody. The Post says Grimes hasn't asked for custody or child support, but TMZ speculates that could be a next step. Musk has not yet responded, per the reports. So It's a poop emoji. Yeah, big yikes. Also, kind of fucking wild that they apparently... Uh... You know, they had kids out of wedlock. Who cares? But there are, like, legal things that you should do in that event. Uh, and they seem to have done nothing of the sort. Uh, I, I, I'm uh, uh, giving her the benefit of the doubt that there was probably some emotional manipulation happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would There's, I would guess so. It's impossible to not have a weird power dynamic when you are the richest and, some, in some cases, very powerful man. I guess, but yeah, it's just, it's pretty crazy that at no point did it occur to her, like, what happens if we break up and we have these three children together? Uh, what, you know, rights do I have as the mother of these children? Well, based on everything that we know about <laughs> Elon Musk, uh, it was probably pretty scary for her to even float those ideas in her brain. So, I, I, I don't know, I'm just saying, like, she was like, hey, this quirky guy I, te I texted with on Twitter, he's going to take me to the Met Gala. And then yeah. fast forward. So. Anyways, in other lawsuit news, because, you know, no shortage of lawsuits no. for Elon. He loves them. He, he eats lawsuits for breakfast. <laughs> you eat lawsuits for breakfast? <laughs> uh, here's something that everyone predicted would happen the moment that Elon announced Twitter's name change to X from Engadget. Elon Musk's X Corp is facing what could be the first of several lawsuits related to its name. A Florida-based company called X Social Media has accused X Corp of trademark and service mark infringement, obviously for the use of the letter X. Musk rebranded Twitter in July, renamed the social network as X, and replaced its iconic bird logo with the letter. The executive is known for having an affinity for the letter X, so it didn't come as a surprise, but as trademark attorney Josh Gerben told Reuters back then, there's about a 100% probability that Twitter slash X will be sued by both opportunistic and legitimate plaintiffs over the new name. Today, Gerben's firm represents the plaintiffs in this case. So it continues, X Social Media described itself in the lawsuit as a company that has offered its advertising and social media services connecting law firms and those in need of advocates since 2016. While its logo looks vastly different from the logo used by the social network formerly known as Twitter, it argued in its complaint that it frequently emphasizes the X portion of its mark throughout its advertising, blogs, and newsletters highlighting its work. 
The Florida-based company also said that the media coverage Elon Musk's X got when it rebranded caused confusion and had led consumers to believe that its advertising services are being offered by or associated with X Corp. As X is a social media platform, consumers naturally conflate X social media as an X Corp social media platform, it explained. The plaintiff told the court that it has already suffered losses in revenue due to Twitter's rebranding, and that it's highly probable that the confusion will continue to its financial detriment, especially since X Corp appears at the top of search results when you look for X social media, or at least it used to be before news about the lawsuit came out. I think Google's doing its job. Uh, sure, there you go. You search for X social media, and it tells you about the lawsuit. The, the, the X social media is uh, suing X. Exactly what millions doing... of people are looking for when they search for that. Yeah, great. And uh, finally, one more lawsuit to round things out for today. Uh, Tesla is being sued for being a really fucking racist place to work. Hmm. Here's Engadget again. Tesla has been tolerating racial harassment at its factory in Fremont, California, since at least 2015 until today, according to the lawsuit filed by the U.S. Equal Opportunity Commission. The automaker has violated federal law by tolerating the widespread and ongoing racial harassment of its black employees, the agency said. Further, affected workers who raised concerns about the abuse they were getting were apparently subjected to various forms of retaliation. They were transferred, their duties were changed, or they were terminated. The EEOC's lawsuit says black employees were regularly called variations of the N-word, monkey, boy, and black bitch throughout the factory, even in hubs where workers gathered. These employees also encountered drawings of racial graffiti, including swastikas and nooses on desks, as well as on the walls of bathroom stalls and elevators throughout the factory. What the fuck? If these allegations sound familiar, it's because they're identical to the complaints filed by plaintiffs who previously sued Tesla for racial harassment. They're fucking drawn swastikas in the Why? bathroom stalls. Literal racism factory. What the fuck? Whoo! Back when my dad worked uh, at the car factory, the bathrooms were covered in pornography. Yeah, what happened? I miss the 80s and 90s. What happened to this country? Now it's just overt racism. It used to be you'd find uh, the phone number of the guy no one likes on the wall of the bathroom saying, saying to get uh, a blowjob from a beautiful I woman. I suck and fuck. Uh, yeah. But now they they got all racist with it and kind of ruined the vibe. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking wild. And like, I would assume there's evidence, like photographic evidence. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I was never allowed to use the company, the employee bathroom when I would visit my dad at work. Yeah. Because so it was plastered. Yeah. Floor to ceiling. No joke. With pornography. Oh, well, yeah. It's the only way you can get porn back then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Jeez. I got a couple minutes. I'm going to go into the yeah. stall and just look at the wall, I guess. Anyways, that's our show. And remember, we, we have those gotcha mechanics as well. You yeah. hit the button, confetti goes everywhere, and it's far cheaper than $500 a month. It is yeah, zero dollars. No, we will never charge you $500 a month. I mean, you can become a member for one one hundredth one <laughs> yeah. percent of what Tinder charges, you can become a member of the and channel. And I'd say you get a lot more. And get some cool fucking uh, emotes and stuff yeah. that are not AI generated. They are human generated. And we haven't redone them in a while, but uh, yeah. probably maybe we'll should. Get, maybe we'll add Mickey Mouse with a gun. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we still have the old classics that uh, never go out of style, like Mark Zuckerberg looking like a robot and Elon Musk looking like an idiot. Yeah. Maybe we should do some more emotes. We'll add a know. cowboy. I don't know. Uh, anyways, yes, hit the like button. Uh, make sure to, if, if you feel like it, leave a comment, reply to a comment, help us get back into the algorithm's good graces because we had to take an unscheduled week off to literally physically fight the coronavirus. A battle. I battled Bam. it. Uh, and if you missed our previous video this week, we talked about more Elon stuff, uh, what we did on our COVID vacation, a senator getting caught. Th that story's give it getting even weirder, by the way. I I'll, I'll talk about it on News Dump. Bob Menendez. Uh, Bob Menendez getting caught doing a little uh, Jersey-style corruption. Bars. Corruption. Gold bars. The most recent train wreck GOP debate and uh, Trump going to court. A bunch more stuff yeah, like we, that. Yeah, we talked about a lot of stuff. So check that out over here, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.